So let me pass out this recipe. You can call it all sorts of different names. Fruit of the Bosco, mixed berry sorbet, uh, mixed fruit Italian ice. It's all the same stuff, sugar, water, and flavor. And uh, it's, it's very simple. Let me go get the berries. I like to use uh, fresh frozen fruit. find the fresh frozen fruit. I don't know if it's in the front of my car. It's going to take the office manager to find the fresh frozen fruit. <laughs> okay, so I'll leave this to the side for you. All right. And let me get a bucket to empty this. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Paula. Ah, oh, now I forgot. This one had chocolate chips in it. Never so. heard anything. No? Chocolate chips? Yeah. Never heard anything. Okay. Do we have a, a strainer? A strain. I didn't see one. Here. Huh? What do you want to do? Strain it before it goes down the drain? I was. Um, I'll but, ask around. I'll, I'll find one. Well, I had one here last week. A strainer. Huh? Yeah. Um, I'm looking for a strainer because when you've got something like uh, nuts or chips, rather than pour the wastewater into the sink and risk clogging up your drain, uh, the strainer will catch it. Now there's three levels of Italian ice that you can make, and you'll actually use all three. There it is. Thank you. I knew it would show up somewhere. Thanks, Great. Chuck. Like I'll, have some stuff I'll go ahead and get some water here. There's three levels of Italian ice. Uh, the top level, the best, I think, is fresh fruit, sugar, and water. Uh, but fresh fruit isn't always practical because let's say take blueberry. Uh, the season for blueberries is usually around mid-June in um, um, Michigan. And so what if I want to make fresh blueberry in September? Uh, I can't get fresh blueberries. So I like to use fresh frozen. It's quite inexpensive. They're picked at the height of the season, and so you know they're going to be good. So I use a lot of frozen fruit. If you go to the supermarket, to the ice cream section, that's where you'll find small bags, large bags of, of fruit. And uh, it's, it's very well priced, and of course that's going to make a great ice. Um, the next level of Italian ice, let me just get that going. The next level down from Italian ice would be using a base. Uh, one flavor that I find hard to get is mango, and so there's a company, and you can see one of my videos that we just recently did of using bases. This is from iRice Company, and that's a mango base, and that makes an excellent flavor. And then uh, one level down from there, and that's where people say, oh, wait a minute, you know, don't go any lower. I'm not going to cheapen my product any, any lower, and that is using an extract. Well, why would you want to use an extract? Because kids like bubble gum and kids like cotton candy, and there are no bubble gum trees growing here in Florida. So we use an extract, just like if you were baking that birthday cake, vanilla cake, you'd use vanilla extract. We're going to use uh, bubble gum flavor. So to make bubble gum Italian ice, I'd only have to use uh, about an ounce or so of this to make the bubble gum. And then to get uh, a natural color without using, say, red dye 40, um, I can use, uh, there's a company called Green Mountain Flavors, and they, Green Mountain Flavors makes all natural extracts and colors. Uh, in fact, they sent me, uh, I, I, I love to tell this story, they sent me a bottle of concentrated beet juice, you know, the beets, the vegetable that 
everybody hates except my wife, and uh, I, I can't stand beets. And so I call up the president of the company. I said, really, you think I'm going to sell beet Italian ice in the Bronx? And he starts laughing. He goes, no, Steve, beets are just really, really deep red. And we concentrate it, and we use that as a natural food coloring instead of the artificial red dye 40. So it, it works out perfect. And Green Mountain Flavors has uh, lots of different ideas like that if you need to uh, color uh, an ice cream. So, what's my, uh, do I have a copy of my formula? I don't. All right, I'll see if I can find one. Here. You have one? There we go. Fruit of Tabasco. So I need two pounds of cane sugar. Oh, thanks. And three quarts of water. I'll get the three quarts of water. This one is just so easy. Oh, I need more sugar. It's here. Okay. Hey, Jack. Yes, sir. We're out of sugar, and I think there's a lot of it sitting in the back of my car. Would you ask Paula if there's cane sugar in the back of my car? Steve, what's we'll pre-gel? Nice. What's pre-gel? Uh, I was just going to get uh, to that while we wait for the sugar. Uh, pre-gel is an Italian company. There's two of them, Fabri and uh, pre-gel, and they're for making gelatos. Um, in fact, when I was at Penn State, I made the fruit of Tabasco, and they made a, uh, a lemon, but they used it from a powder. Well, powders are, you know, it's nice if you can't get anything else, but powders are never going to be better than fresh fruit. So their lemon had a terrible aftertaste. How much sugar? Um, thank you. Two pounds. Okay. Uh, the, you can see this is all just made from the supermarket. This is my fruit, sugar, tap water. It, it couldn't be easier. And my food cost on this is going to be maybe no more than uh, two cents an ounce. So a four-ounce portion... This is the way we eat it in New York, uh, in a squeeze cup. That's a three and a half ounce squeeze cup, so if I crown it over, it's four ounces. And the way we eat that is we squeeze it up from the bottom and eat it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, that's called a squeeze cup, but anything uh, this side of the George Washington Bridge, nobody's going to know what a squeeze cup is. Uh, so if you had to go buy it, it's called a pleated, like a lady's dress, pleated water cup. You ask a, a food supplier or paper supplier for squeeze cups, they're going to look at you like deer in the headlights. Pleated water cup. Um, so that's the way I do Italian ice. Now, I can take the same product, and I can put it in this glass, and all of a sudden, it's fresh fruit sorbet. And there's no difference. It's going to be the same product coming out of the machine. It's just I'm selling this you know, on Bay 8th Street in Brooklyn as Italian ice, and this I'm selling at La Cote Basque. As, as a sorbet. Uh, the only difference here is this is $1.50 and this is about $5.50. Uh, only how it's, it's served. So a wonderful, wonderful product to uh, sell to people. So my sugar and water is in here, thanks to Jeff. And hopefully my math last night was correct. We'll find out. <laughs> and I just pour this in. And then I want to tell you about a great idea for marketing Italian ice. Again, a little bit of sugar residue. I don't care because I'm working with a quantity that that little bit will not matter. So I'm going to turn this on, hit Italian ice. No, I hit the wrong button. I hit beekeeper, uh, Italian beekeeper. ice. Beekeeper? I was thinking of him. I was thinking of him because he's going to look at this one day when he buys it and says, hey, the Italian ice is the same speed as homemade. Right. <laughs> it is. In other words, we run Italian ice at full speed. Turn on the refrigeration. And here's where I make the mess, trying to pour this in. Want me to do it? Sure. That would be helpful. See, he's got a lot more practice than me. Look at that. And with my machine, everything goes right in. Um, you can't do this with an Italian machine or any other machine on the market. By the way, these machines are all made here in the United States of America, here in our factories in Brooksville. 
Oh, okay. So all we're doing is just ramming down the last few in there. But we can put whole nuts, cookies, candies right into the machine. So I invented the term uh, fruit flavor. And by putting the flavor into the machine, for every particle of the sugar and water, I have a particle of strawberry, too. And these are just blueberries, strawberries, uh, blackberries, um, uh, strawberries, blueberries, dark sweet cherries, and red tart pitted cherries. And you can also get it with raspberries uh, and blackberries, yes. No, they're no, thawed I, out. I thawed them because I want them to break up. I don't, otherwise, if I don't uh, thaw them, I'm going to get little marbles uh, in the Italian ice. I'm sorry? Thaw them out first. And if, yeah. Um, and if I wanted to have whole pieces of fruit in here, um, there's a technique that you can do because the whole, if you take fresh strawberries and cut them in half, they have a lot of moisture in them. So if you threw them into ice cream, you'd end up with little, you've had a homemade ice cream that has little marbles in it that someone made at home a quart of. That's because of the moisture in the, uh, in the, uh, the fruit. So what you do is, you cut those strawberries and uh, lay them out on a cookie sheet and put a thin coating of sugar over them. It's called sugaring the fruit, good name. And then put it in the refrigerator overnight. They'll absorb the sugar that you just sprinkled on them and now they have a sugar content higher uh, than what they originally were and they won't turn into little marbles. But we just let this run. Now I have put thousands, literally thousands of people in the business with this size machine and I start them off doing Italian ice because you don't need any other equipment really. It's, it's the least expensive way to get into business. And uh, my typical phone call is someone who has been downsized, outsourced, fired, let go, or just plain retired and, and that lasted well for two days. Uh, that would be me if I ever did that. And they want to get back into business. They want to get into their own business because I firmly believe the only way you're going to make it in the, in the future in the United States, the way things are, is if you're your own business person. Um, so they buy a machine, they buy a push cart, they're working long hours, and they're making some really good money. Uh, they could graduate up and get a store, which I would put into uh, a less than affluent neighborhood. I would put it into some place that was extremely affordable uh, and just sell a lot of ice. But I came up with an idea that's worked out very well. Until I did these videos and told everybody how to make Italian ice, it was the most secretive business in the world. You ask someone, gee, I wish I could make Italian ice, they'd say, oh, no, no, you can't make it. This <laughs> Luigi, recipe... Uncle Luigi. Yeah, my great-grandfather, Uncle Luigi from uh, Genoa, <laughs> Italy, he passed down the secret, secret <laughs> recipe. Well, I hate to tell you, but I'm his Uncle Luigi. I'm not Italian. I haven't been to Genoa, Italy, but my family is responsible for basically all the Italian ice in the world uh, because it's, it's made on our machines because we're the only ones strong enough to be able to pull through literally wet cement. You know, that's a cement mixer. And right now what in there, we have in there is practically wet cement. Um, so it's very secretive. When I, left, when I left the Bronx and came down here and made those videos, I was, it was made in no uncertain terms by some friends of mine uh, that, who I would sold to for years that uh, I was not welcome back in Brooklyn because I was giving away all their trade secrets. Uh, that's one problem with the business. The other is my customer, Little Jimmy's or Rosati's or Via Veneto, uh, who are big wholesalers up north, and they'll sell you Italian ice and it made on my machines, uh, but you have to have a minimum order of about eight or nine hundred dollars. And that order is so big, it would go from here to there and up here, that you have to go out and rent uh, refrigeration or freezer space somewhere in your town to store the minimum order. So that precludes you from getting into business. So it's secret, and the minimum order is too small. So I came up with the idea is, you're going to come up to me. I've got my push cart, and you're going to come up to you and say, gee, I wish I could go into the Italian ice business. Oh, Instead of telling you how many ways you can't do it, I, I would say, I'll tell you what. I'll sell you my Italian ice. I'll sell you um, this tub of ice for whatever price you want, $25, $35 still going to be cheaper by a long shot than a, a Via Veneto or a Little Jimmy's because they're up around $70 by time you pay the minimum order and the shipping. Shipping is the killer. 
Um, so you're selling it for $30 or $25 instead of 70. And you tell the guy, I'll tell you what, you call me no later than Tuesday afternoon, tell me, tell me how many tubs you need, and you can pick them up Friday afternoon after uh, two o'clock. Bring cash, we don't take credit cards, we don't take checks, we don't take promises. Uh, it's cash and carry. You bring me uh, $25 per tub, and it's yours. You put it into your, I'm gonna deliver it to you frozen rock solid, which is just zero degrees, that's not hard. And you're gonna take it home, and tomorrow on the weekend, you're gonna go out and sell it in your push cart. So you do that with one person, and then it's another person. In no time at all, you've got 20 people buying ice from you. That's 20 people who are not on your payroll. It's 20 people that you're not having to uh, pay you know, the government tax to, because you're just retail selling them a tub of product. Uh, it's also 20 people who aren't stealing from you. Hey boss, I know you said I should get 96 servings out of this tub, but I only got 53. I don't know where the money went, boss, I'm sorry. Just had a bad day. Yeah, well, we know where it went, went right in the pocket. So it eliminates all that, and uh, it's, it's practically a, a retail sale, because if, uh, if you walk up to me and order a, a squeeze cup of lemon ice, that's a retail sale. If my wife Paula walks up and she orders six tubs of lemon ice, and she takes the pays for them, puts them in her car and coolers and takes them back to her pizza parlor, that's still a retail sale. I didn't deliver it. I don't have to have a truck. I don't have to have a DOT license. Uh, I don't have to report it as a wholesale business to the state because it was a retail sale as if you came up and bought a single scoop of product. So it's an easy way to expand the business. And you're making a lot of money, and, and if you think like me, you're doing an awful lot of good, too. That's 20 people who are employed now uh, who, who didn't have jobs. They've gotten off the welfare system, and they're just proud as can be to be making a lot of money uh, selling sugar water. So it's, it's just a great, a great, great product. Uh, a lot of different things you can do with it. And the knowledge that you get here from Jeff and me, and you open your own business, you can open it anywhere in the world that you want to live. People say... Uh, where should I open my ice cream parlor? And I answer, where do you want to live? You want to live in Tahiti? You want to live in Argentina? You want to live in Little Saudi Rock, Arabia? Little Rock, Dubuque, Des Moines? Dubuque. Uh, Got to go to Dubuque. There you go. Anywhere. But that's it. You can take this knowledge and go anywhere. And um, that, that's a lot of fun, too, because you're not limited in any way, shape, or form. Selling the, uh, ice in Dubuque is going to be the same as selling it uh, in New York. Steve, tell them where the number one ice cream selling market is in the country. It's Boston. New England. Yeah, New Who England. Would figure. Yeah. And the number two is the Great Lakes region. Yeah. It's a hundred below up there. <laughs> yep. But That's those right. are the top two ice cream frozen dessert selling areas in the country. New England, Great Lakes. Go figure. I'm in Florida. Well, I the, thought I'd be king. The truth is, uh, think about it. Uh, if it's snowing, if it's a blizzard, uh, you're going to walk to your car. If it's raining, you're going to run to your car. So these products sell in any weather except rain. How they can sell product in Seattle, I have no idea. But one of my very best customers is called Molly, Moon's, uh, Molly Moon in Seattle. She started with one store. I taught her how to make ice cream while talking on the phone as Paul and I drove uh, from uh, Brooksville here up to Savannah, Georgia. That was a long phone call, but that got her started. And you know, she's way beyond me. I mean, she is a great ice cream maker. She's got five stores now in, in, uh, in that market. But, and, and you can call this product anything you want. We call it Italian ice. Like I said, the, in, in, in Philadelphia, it's called Italian water ice. In Birmingham, Alabama, uh, where <laughs> Ken is from, it's called Greek ices. And why is it called Greek ices? Because five Greek brothers left Brooklyn and went to Birmingham. And they said, why are we going to call it Italian ice? We're Greek. So they call it Greek ices. Uh, in Hawaii, it's called Bubby's uh, Ices because Bubby's Ice Cream is the uh, major maker of it and one of my customers. He's from Queens, New York. That's where I hail. I know. Good place to be from. All right, so I'm going to let go. I can pull this out again just like the ice cream. I can do it. If I'm making 15 batches, I can pull it out soft and get it in the freezer. Or if Jeff says, hey, we just ran out of the flavor, we need it right away, I'll pull it stiffer 
and uh, take a little longer to get it out of the machine, but I can start Serve serving it. it right away. So it's a matter of whatever you want. Any questions so far on ISIS? Gee, everybody knows everything. Now you okay. can combine the two. There are companies out now that give you a product with ice cream, ices, ice cream, ices in a cup. And it's a very cool deal, very unique. Uh, I forgot what they call it. They Jeremiah is one of my customers. I put him in business over in Orlando. Here's something that I made and are selling now. It's called the Rainbow Maker. Uh, and all it is is a divider that divides the tub into three. So when I want to make Superman Italian ice, I make lemon, and I maybe have three or four of these. I fill this section with lemon from the machine, and then I make, uh, that's the red, and then I make, uh, uh, or the white, rather, and then I make the red, cherry, and then I make the blue ice, uh, blueberry or blue raspberry, and then I pull this out, and I've got three flavors in my tub, and when I scoop it, I go semicircular motion around. And these, this is not a new idea. People have done this for years with cardboard. But cardboard is dirty. Uh, it doesn't, if you freeze the product, the cardboard won't come out. And, uh, but with stainless steel, and that's all welded and that's made right here, uh, it's as slippery as can be. And so it'll, you just shake the tub a little bit and then pull that out and go on to the next batch. So uh, you can do a three flavor Italian ice, or you can do a Spumoni, which is three flavors of ice cream, uh, Neapolitan. Try to guess what happened there. Oh, no. Let me check my product. This is almost ready. Um, oh, a customer yeah. sent this back. I cannot name him because you can see he said that it got damaged in shipment. Well, I could stand on that thing. It's not going to get <laughs> damaged in shipment. <laughs> damaged in shipment. I looked at it, and I thought, wow, that's some interesting damage. It's curving that way, and it's curving the same direction, and that's curving the same direction, and that's curving the same direction. What do you think he thought maybe the way this should be made is you put it inside the oh, batch no. freezer to make three compartments and then turned on Are the batch you freezer? Kidding? That's Are what you it had kidding? to be. He's not talking. I sent him his money back because it arrived damaged. And you can't bend this. <laughs> I mean, you could, all day you can't bend it. Wow. <laughs> okay, isn't that wow. great? I love that story. But uh, yeah, I sent him his money back because it was quote unquote damaged in shipment. And wow. I want a happy customer. Holy so watch how fast this comes out. And that color is all from the fruit. Has nothing to do with any artificial colorings. Whoops. That was me. I, I got it. I got it. I didn't put it on right. Still not on right. Okay. Can you get, move that down a little? Look at that. About two cents per ounce food cost. So a four ounce portion, what's that? Eight cents. We're good, right? Yep. Good enough. And come on up and try it. When I made it, now this is talking about experimenting. I made this at Penn State. And I thought that the flavor was a little bit lacking and it was a little bit crunchy. So I added a half pound more sugar. Move your hand. And we'll see how it does. It, it should make it smoother and more flavorful. How about a bowl with stuff in it? There you go. There you That's go. Perfect. Let it go. You're welcome. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Listen, when I make a good product, I'm the most surprised person. Because I'm always experimenting, usually on you. girl.